the UFC belt has changed hands a lot this year throughout all of the divisions. And in this video, I want to talk about what champions I believe are going to retain their title through the year of 2024. And most, more importantly, who do I believe is going to take the belt next year? Now, we're going to start flyweight, move all the way up to heavyweight, and I'll do the women's division at the end just because... Let's be real, we came here for the men's divisions because that's where all the interesting stuff is going to happen this year, aside from one thing, and I'll get to that when we get there. But before we begin, please consider a like, comment, subscribe, really helps you in the algorithm. We have crossed 2,000 subscribers, I don't want to get too into it, but that, that that's crazy. We started out with 400 subscribers, now we're at 2,000. Crazy guys, thank you. And with that out of the way, let's get to the video. With men's flyweight. Now, this division was probably the most complicated to do because, let, I'll, I'll be real with you, flyweight is probably the most poorly marketed division in the entirety of the UFC. So this one I actually had to do some research on. I have concluded that the three big players that next year are going to be Pantoja as the champion, Brennan Moreno, and Amir Albazi. Now, to Figure out who I believe is going to become champion. It all really comes down to the Amir Albazi versus Brandon Moreno fight. Now, one thing I will say: the Amir Albazi versus Brandon Moreno fight is going to be a five-round fight, even though it's not on a main event. It is on the main card, but it's five rounds. And for that reason, I do favor Brandon Moreno. Not to mention, this is at Mexico City. Amir Albazi, I watched back the Amir Albazi versus Kai Kara France fight. And if Kai Kara France can out grapple you at times and get success in the later rounds, I think Moreno's going to get it done. I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to say fairly easily. I can see this going to a decision because I think Amir Albazi is going to do well in the beginning of the fight. He might even be able to score a takedown in maybe the first or second rounds, but even that I'm kind of skeptical of. Because if I remember correctly, he wasn't able to get a legit takedown until around early the third round. And I think in those rounds, Brandon Moreno is going to take advantage of this. Unless they're both not used to high elevation. But I do believe Brandon Moreno used to train in Mexico City just because, you know, you got to get used to that elevation. You'd be a fool not to. I think Brennan Moreno gets this done by a unanimous decision or a finish in the 4th and the 5th. Now, this is where, if you're a Moreno fan, your heart's probably going to break here. I believe Brennan Moreno just can't beat Pantoja. We, we see this in MMA, where somebody can be more skilled than the other fighter. In this case, I would argue they're about even. I mean, what's the Pantoja versus Moreno fight? You can argue Moreno... But I favor Pantoja. And I think Pantoja is just the flyweight Pajera. And Moreno is just the Israel Adesanya. Fan favorite. But I, I just don't think he gets it done against Pantoja. And I, for that reason, I think Pantoja is going to be able to retain the belt. I think he beats Brennan Moreno near the later part of that year. I would be kind of surprised if we get two title defenses off. Purely because there is not a... A lot of clear contenders. I know there's Manel Cape coming up, but I, I don't know what's going on there. I thought Manel Cape was fighting Kai Kara France, but apparently Kai Kara France isn't isn't biting at that fight anymore, unless that's changed by the time you're watching this video. So I, I'm not sure if Manel Cap can even get up there, and I don't even think Manel Cap gets past Brandon Moreno or Amir Albazi. So the point I'm trying to make here is I think Pantoja wins because there's just a lack of contenders. And I'm okay with that because I want there to actually be a champion that can get title defenses at flyweight. Because at this point, just rename it Mouseweight because Demetrius Johnson runs that shit. Next division that we're going to go over is Bantamweight. Son O'Malley is the champion of Bantamweight. Probably the craziest thing to happen this year, if not second. And this division is probably... Probably has the most contenders. Let, I'm going to start listing them off to you because we, we have some interesting matchups. We have O'Malley, of course, because he is the champion. We have Cheeto Vera because he's getting the next title shot. We have Umar Nurmagomedov looking to get a jump up the rankings against Corey Sanhagen, which that fight is going to happen before 
our next two contenders, Marab Devasvili and Henry Cejudo. So I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say O'Malley beats Cheeto Vera. I don't believe he's gonna be able to TKO him because Cheeto, bro, just name him Terminator because bro is unbelievably durable. Whatever this man's skin is, like, I feel like fighters who hit him, it's like scratching your hands on sandpaper because his skin just doesn't tear. Like, I don't know how he was able to get through. It is crazy how just uncuttable the man's skin is. I think his durability is going to get him through the five rounds. But I think it's going to be a a pretty dominant unanimous decision win for O'Malley. I think O'Malley has the movement to outmaneuver Cheeto Vera in the standing. I don't think there's going to be a leg kick situation again. I think San O'Malley is going to outland him fairly easily. I think Cheeto Vera will have some success, but I think O'Malley outworks him, and then maybe we get Cheeto putting some work in in the fifth round, maybe in the fourth, but I think O'Malley gets it done, and I think he gets it done fairly easily. And I, and I don't, don't expect a super interesting fight there. That's all I'm saying. Now, I think the next person to get the title saw is going to be the winner of Corey Sanhagen versus Marab Devasvili. And the reason why I say that is because... <clears throat> Actually, wait, wait, wait. Pause. Let me let me go back. The next person to get the title shot is going to be the winner of Umar Nurmagomedov versus Corey Sanhagen. The reason why I say that is because I think Marab Devasvili is going... I think he beats Henry Cejudo, but if Cejudo beats Marab, they're going to give it to Cejudo next because Cejudo versus Son O'Malley does good numbers. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Cejudo has actually done a great job in... Like, proposing his case to fight Saad O'Malley. There is history there. You can do the fight. And O'Malley might be the only fighter ever to out Karin Cejudo. I know, I know it's close, but I, honestly, it might, it might happen. If Cejudo beats Marab, he fights for the title next. And that's a really interesting fight. I'm... I can... I would have to favor O'Malley just because of the aids of Cejudo. I don't, I don't like his chances there. He's less durable than he is has ever been in his career. I mean, he tweaked his shoulder doing a YouTube video, so I don't think Cejudo is going to be able to win the belt. And I, I, I think it's pushing it if he beats Marab. I think Marab is just that little bit younger and a little bit more hungry because Cejudo is already a Hall of Famer. But Marab just doesn't have that yet. Now, I would argue he isn't that hungry because bro just gave up his title shot to his best friend, Aljamain Sterling. Not once, not twice, but arguably three times. The reason why I say that is because the UFC offered to give him the fight, Marab versus Aljamain Sterling. I understood why he wouldn't take the fight. I mean, that makes sense, right? Because, I mean, they train together. That causes a lot of conflict. I get it. But then O'Malley wins the belt, and then he says Aljamain Sterling should get the next title saw. He should get the immediate rematch. And whether you think that's true or not, you have to understand, Marab, that you are not in the position to argue that. Because the UFC at this point just wants to get rid of you. If you lose to Cejudo, understand the UFC is going to bury you in the rankings. Now, <clears throat> to Umar Nurmagomedov versus Corey Sanhagen... I, I I can see Corey winning this. Now, I think it's a lot closer than people think it is. I think Corey Sanhagen would easily outstrike Umar. I think Corey Sanhagen can outmaneuver Umar Nurmagomedov. But obviously, the power of in Umar's hands, I think, is a little bit more than Corey's. And the grappling of Umar is just superior to Corey Sanhagen. And... I'm very conflicted on this fight. I don't know how I'm going to call this because I can say Corey Sanhagen, but if Corey Sanhagen shows up injured like he did to the Rob Font fight, he loses that fight because you are not out grappling Umar. So I'm, I'm going to say that one's a toss up. I think Umar, Umar against O'Malley, that's another interesting fight. I would say the person that has the best chance to beat O'Malley would probably be a Corey Sanhagen or um, a Marab Devasvili. Other than that, I think O'Malley might be able to actually retain the belt. 
And if he can, then we're getting into 2025. And I think at that point, we are going to see possibly a Song Yadong make his way up the rankings. And we're going to see a Song Yadong versus Son O'Malley early to late 2025. But that's speculation. The next division that we are going to talk about is Featherweight. Alexander Volkanovsky returns to his division against Ilya Toporia. And I'm conflicted on this purely because... Volkanovski's getting up there in age, man. He is. I mean, like, 35 years old. The, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but the if you look at 170 and below, there are only two wins in title fights at that age, and the, both of those are coming from Tyron Woodley at 170. If anybody's going to break that trend, it would be Alexander Volkanovski. But frankly... I can see Ilya Toporia taking advantage of a possibly um, compromised Islam, um, not Islam Makachev, Alexander Volkanovsky because of the head kick KO from Islam Makachev. I also, I think height is a factor here. Now, what do I mean by that? In most instances, the taller fighter is going to have an advantage over the shorter fighter when it comes to striking. Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, both fight Alexander Volkanovsky, but somehow Volkanovsky has developed the style to take advantage of taller opponents. I think he's used to that. However, Ilya Toporia has phenomenal striking and is smaller than Max Holloway. I would actually argue Ilya Toporia has probably... I think he's up there with some of the back like the best combinations mixing up body work into his striking in the featherweight division. The only person that I would might put above him when it comes to boxing might be Max Holloway, but if we look at pure boxing, I think Ilya Topor is just a little bit better. I think in the pocket, Ilya might actually have an advantage here, and I can see Ilya just attacking the liver of Volkanovski and clearing way um, clearing away for his overhand right and we might we might see Volkanovski get chinned. I think my controversial opinion of the video would probably be Ilya Toporia is going to sock the world and become champion. But I'm I'm you know what? I'll go with that. I'll have a controversial opinion and if I'm wrong, I'll be happy because I want Volkanovski to retire as the best featherweight of all time because you know there's going to be people that are still going to doubt him, even if he goes undefeated for the rest of his career. Next division, lightweight. This one, this one's pretty easy. I think Islam Makachev beats every single lightweight right now. And if we're looking at the frequency of which he fights, it is considered a blessing if he fights two times a year. And if we look at the schedule of 2024 right now, Islam's not fighting in the beginning of the year. We know he's going to fight in October because it's Abu Dhabi. I can see a scenario where Islam Makachev only gets one fight in next year, and that's in Abu Dhabi, and he gets two fights in in 2025. And if he does get one fight in, I am I'm questioning whether it's even going to be in lightweight because he has been hinting at, for a while, he wants to get the chance to challenge for the welterweight belt against Leon Edwards, and I think the UFC would give it to him because that makes it very interesting at lightweight, because now we're dealing with a lightweight division with no Islam Makachev, a returning Conor McGregor against a top five opponent in Michael Chandler. And if Conor can somehow win, we are really talking about Conor McGregor fighting for the interim belt against either a Justin Gatesy or a Charles Oliveira. They will skip over Armin Sarukian. They will force Armin to fight either... Uh, I don't know who they're going to force him to fight, but trust me, the UFC is not sweating Armin Saruki, and they are not in a rush to put him in the title shot, just because he can't bring numbers yet. If Islam does defend the title, I think he's going to fight Justin Gacy because he's ruled out fighting Charles Oliveira, and I understand his reasoning because he's already beat the guy. We question Kamaru Usman's title run because a lot of his title defenses are rematches against Jorge Masvidal, who at best was journeyman level his entire career. Colby Covington, who, considering his last performance, he's questionable. Gilbert Burns, who is a solid opponent, in my opinion. And Leon Edwards, which he lost the rematch to. 
I argue Kamaru Usman's the second best welterweight of all time, but now you have that argument over, wait, how good was his record anyways? I think Islam is getting ahead of that, and he wants to fight a different opponent to make his resume look better. So I think Islam Makachev, Justin Gaethje, I think Islam Makachev pretty easily beats Justin Gaethje, and he is still the lightweight champion of the world. And I think he remains that way either way, unless they force an interim, which he's still the technic technically the undisputed champion of lightweight. So Islam Makachev will stay the lightweight champion. Next up is welterweight. We have Leon Edwards as the welterweight champion of the world. Hot take. I don't think Leon is going to reign for very long. I know that's crazy. And I think the biggest reason because of this is I think Leon... Leon is just going to do enough to win the fight. And that inherently, that's not bad. But when you're fighting somebody like Bilal Muhammad, who has that ex exact same thought process, I really can see a scenario where Bilal Muhammad just, like, upsets the entire world and wins by a split decision. I'm not kidding. Now, I would argue you should never win a split decision in a championship fight ever. It has to be unanimous. But I really can see a scenario where Bilal becomes champion. Now, do I think that's going to happen? Probably not. For, th for this reason. If Islam Makachev does go up to welterweight, fights for the belt, and if he becomes champion, that, that complicates everything. But... L I, don't, I think they're going to force a number one contenders match between Bilal Mohamed and Savkat Rachmanov. I think Savkat Rachmanov beats Bilal Mohamed. And really, this is all culminating. And I believe the year 2024 is going to be the start of Savkat Rachmanov's reign at welterweight. I really do believe that. I think Savkat is one fight away from a title shot. I don't think you could justify it off of Wonder Boy. I think the UFC will force a number one contenders match. Savkat wins, Savkat fights Leon, and I think Savkat beats Leon. I think it's an interesting fight, but I think Savkat becomes champion. The only thing that would complicate this and make it so I, I don't really know what's going on is if Islam Makachev comes up the welterweight for a fight. But I'm going to assume that doesn't happen just to make my life easier. The next division is middleweight. Son Strickland's the champion of the world. I would argue that's the craziest moment of 2024. But at the same time, I, I think this is going to be fairly short-lived. Because we got... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. I'm going to say we're going to get two title defenses out of Sean Strickland in the year of 2024. I think Drickus Duplessis it brings some challenges in that fight. I think on paper, Strickland should win that fight. And I th I've talked about this in other videos. But when you're fighting somebody that will strike with you like Strickland, I think that is a sock to the system because most people don't strike like Strickland. I think that was a big reason why Israel lost to Strickland because I think he went into that fight expecting a wrestling match and then Strickland just decided he was going to outstrike Israel Adesanya for arguably the first time in his entire career. I don't think Drickus... I think Drickus is going to have a fairly difficult time getting Strickland to the ground. Although people clown on this fight, his fight with Abbas Magomedov, I, I, I'm going to say this. Abbas has worse cardio than Drickus Duplessis post-nose surgery. But Tr Son Strickland was able to su survive on the ground with a legit Dagestani wrestler. And I think Strickland's ant like defensive wrestling is going to get him through the first and the second round. And I think after that, I think this is going to be the test of Drickus' cardio. I think Son Strickland is going to be able to outstrike him. If he gets a finish, I will honestly be surprised. But I do believe Strickland is going to get a unanimous decision against Drickus Duplessis. Now, if Drickus becomes champion, I can see a scenario where Israel Adesanya comes back and immediately fights Drickus Duplessis. However, th this is another one of my hot takes. This is what I think is going to happen. Israel Adesanya's comeback fight is going to be Hamzat Shemaev. I think Hamzat Shemaev actually beats Israel Adesanya. I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed in that. Because as good as Israel's defensive wrestling is, 
there is a difference in the type of wrestling that you are going up against, against somebody like Yoel Romero and Marvin Vittori, than somebody like Hamzat Shumayev. I'm not saying that it's better, but Hamzat's style of wrestling is harder to train for than somebody like Yoel. And I think Hamzat Shumayev would, act, would submit Israel Adesanya. Now, I think the end of the year is going to be Hamzat Shumayev versus Son Strickland. That's an interesting fight, because apparently when they used to train together, Hamza would ragdoll Strickland around. And this was a 170 Hamzat Shemaev. I, I do believe Hamza will become champion of middleweight, so I, I'm sad to say. I, however, I'm going to add an asterisk to it, and I'm going to say this. Hamzat Shemaev is going to lose the first fight that takes them to championship rounds. Whether that's going to be Son Strickland or somebody else down the line, because I think the UFC could do something with Israel Adesanya and make the fight three rounds. If I'm Israel, I negotiate for that fight to be five because that increases my chances of success. Anybody who's fighting Hamzat Shemaev needs to advocate for five rounds. I think... Shemaev's cardio has been proven that is his biggest weakness. I think Shemaev, although he will beat Strickland, if Strickland can get through the first round, his chances of winning go up exponentially. Because how many of you truly believe Shemaev would win a decision against Strickland, somebody who is better at weaponizing cardio than anybody else in the middleweight division? And I think Hamzat would reign as champion if he's able to get a first round submission over Strickland, which is, I think would happen until, and the, bear with me, until somebody like Bo Nickel is able to come up. Bo Nickel is a better wrestler than Hamzat Chemaev. I don't understand how that's a hot take. If you truly believe that Hamzat is a better wrestler than Bo Nickel, what you're saying is Sweden is better at wrestling than the United States, which is absolutely insane. Bo Nickel, I think, as much as you... I understand why people don't like the guy, okay? Bo Nickel is Bo Nickel's biggest fan. I, I, I watched the JRE too. But Bo Nickel's wrestling in middleweight is a nightmare scenario for just about everybody in that division. I think he beats just about everybody, aside from maybe somebody like Ikram Aliskarov, or even maybe Hamza, but I think Hamza's cardio just isn't up there yet. I think Bo Nickel's wrestling negates Ikram's pretty easily. And it just comes down to striking. So in, in, until Hamza gets taken into the championship rounds, he will reign as champion. That's why Hamza will be the middleweight champion of the world in 2024. Next up is going to be light heavyweight. Okay. Hear me out. Alex Pereira has a chance to reign as the light heavyweight champion of the world, but I'm going to be real with you. I don't think he really cares. Because I think I've, been, I've had a change of heart. I think Alex Pereira is truly hinting at going up the heavyweight and fighting Tom Aspinall at UFC 300. I think the UFC would make that fight because Tom Aspinall is in a tough spot right now because he can't fight Stipe, he can't fight Jones, he's not going to fight Gon. Almeida and Blades have already been booked up. And if we look at light heavyweight, Alex Pereira is waiting on Jamal Hill, who is still suffering from a ruptured Achilles and domestic abuse allegations. Ankalaev is fighting Johnny Walker. That's already booked up. So we have Alex Pereira and, T and Tom Aspinall in a weird spot in their respective divisions. I can see them making this fight, and the justification they're going to use for allowing Alex Pereira to go up a division, although he hasn't even had a single title defense, is because, well, Tom Aspinall isn't even the technical undisputed champion, so it's not a double champ fight. Which, in reality, it is. And I think Tom Aspinall would beat Alex Pereira, but if he wins, bro has single-handedly proved that Plot, ar plot armor is a real thing. That That's crazy. If he does choose to stay at light heavyweight, I think Jamal Hill is the only person with power that can beat Alex Pereira. But if we're going to make it a striking match, I think Alex Pereira beats Jamal Hill. And the only other person I believe that will beat him would be an Uncle Ayev. And I, th I would say 
it's either going to be Ankalaev or Alex Pereira. But Ankalaev arguably lost to Jan Blahovitz. And if the leg kicks of Jan Blahovitz are going to do your legs that dirty, Alex Pereira, who I would argue has the strongest leg kicks in the entirety of MMA right now, I think he really hurts your chances of winning. So I'm going to be a fanboy real quick, and I'm going to say Alex Pereira is going to end the year as the light heavyweight champion, unless he retires before then, in that case on Kaliev. Now we're going to be on to our last men's division. I'll do the women's divisions really quick at the end, but we're going to be doing heavyweight. This one's going to be very quick. It's Tom Aspinall. John Jones is going to have his retirement fight against Stipe Miocic. I think John Jones is going to walk down a geriatric Stipe because as much as you love Stipe, Stipe is one of the goats, but bro is just too old to be fighting, especially even at heavyweight. John Jones gets it done pretty easily, right off into the sunset, with, and they both have bags of money. The next generation of heavyweights is going to be led by Tom Aspinall. So just to run down all the contenders, Tom Aspinall... Already beat Sergey, who I thought was going to win just because he was fighting on short notice. I think he beat Cyril Gaon. Cyril Gaon might be a better striker. Tom Aspinall's a better grappler. Almeida. Almeida can't strike for shit, and I think that's going to be what does him in. So uh, Almeida loses. Curtis Blades won off a fluke against Tom Aspinall in the first place, and I think Aspinall gets it done in the striking department. And nobody else matters. So Tom Aspinall will be the heavyweight champion at the end of 2024. And I'm very confident in that. Unless Alex Pereira comes in and just ruins everything. And in that case, I, I, I really don't understand MMA anymore. So Tom Aspinall, heavyweight champion. Let's do the women's divisions really quick. Now, I'm not trying to be disrespectful when I say this, but I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. This is probably... I'm going to do all of the women's divisions quickly. We're going to start off with straw weight. Zhang Wei Li, Zhang Wei Li dominates that entire division, and I think she does it fairly easily because I think the skill level is Zhang Wei Li, everybody else. So Zhang Wei Li will end the year as champion. Alexa Grasso, the only person that no, the only two people that I think will beat Alexa Grasso would probably be a uh, Valentina Savchenko because that was that that was a weird last fight that they had. Or the potential, and this is the most interesting thing in women's MMA right now, Zhang Wei Li versus Alexa Grasso. Very interesting fight. But at the same time, we're going to have to force an interim because Wei Li, if she wins, or Alexa Grasso, I'm not sure who's going where, I'll have to look at that again. You're going to have to force an interim anyway. So I think although even if Grasso loses, she will be the official champion of that division either way. And so it's either Alexa Grasso or Sevchenko. I think Grasso is going to still be the champion. And last two divisions is women's bantamweight and women's featherweight. Yeah, I'm not forgetting about you. Women's bantamweight is probably going to be Juliana Pena because the UFC has an invested interest in making Pena champion so somebody can beat her. Because it, it should just be called Nunez, Nunez's division. She dominated that division for arguably her entire career. So, yeah. That, that, that's the problem that we have. Women's bantamweight is, is pretty bad right now. So, Pena will become champion. And women's featherweight. What a, what a pathetic joke of a division. My prediction is it should be cut from the entirety of the UFC. Or... Actually, no. Just cut it. There's not a single person in the, ranked, in the rankings of women's featherweight on the actual UFC website. If that's not a sign that you should cut the division, I, I genuinely don't know what is. And that is it for all the divisions of the UFC and who I believe will become champion and who will retain their belt. If you enjoyed this video, please consider a like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me in the algorithm. And a quick update on the part two of the MMA iceberg. I am currently researching that. I just wanted to get the first part out on Christmas just as like a Christmas present to you guys. And the second part will come out before New Year's. I'm still, it's still looking like a three part because it does get pretty like research intensive at the end. But you guys will enjoy it, I promise. And with that out of the way, adios guys.